and action. Welcome, everybody. This is PMP Weekly episode, not 2012, uh, so but 212. So you know, but you know. So anyway, if you know, numbers you know. are hard. <laughs> Math is hard. It is 26th of May. Uh, we are recording typically this on Monday, but this time on Friday because Monday is off in the Netherlands. Uh, you are lucky, lucky people. I'm actually working, yes. but hey, as the US has a public holiday on Monday, that means that my evening is free, which is super exceptional. Wow, so. what are you going to do? What are your plans? Here, it's just unbelievable. Uh, last week or this week, uh, when it, well, last week as we we're publishing this, but this week as we're recording this, this is really hard. Uh, back to the future. Yeah, we were in ECS, and it was, by the way, great to see you. Uh, so, in in a real person since like three years or whatever. So you know. more, I think. I think it's it's been more. I think so. The pandemic has been on for three years already, and I think yeah. March 2020, isn't it? Still. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we were in like <laughs> 955 of March 2020. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. So it's been it's been a while, and and if anything else. Like the show has been like to me, it felt more as gathering in a big get together and seeing friends than really a conference. Yeah, because, yeah. because like like if if you're around, you will get to know folks and you will yes. you know get to you to engage with them on so social and so forth and so on. And but we don't get to see each other that often in person. True. So like seeing each other in person, it was just great. Yep, like, absolutely. That is really, I, like like yeah. Oh, and I can see so that cool. you also got a chaos bug uh, from the trip. Yes. So, so that somewhere over there. <laughs> there you go. Like, which yes. direction do I need to move, move my hand? Yes. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, it was actually really cool. Uh, EZS was sold out uh, completely. And it's uh, to 1,200, uh, 2,500 uh, attendees uh, plus sponsors, plus speakers, plus organizers. So it was a really, really cool. I think we maxed out the capacity of the conference center in Dusseldorf or that area. Of course, there's, there would be an option yeah. to do other things as well. But that also means that next year we'll be in Wiesbaden. Uh, so we'll be back in the where it actually all started um, with a larger uh, venue. And they've been renovating that Wiesbaden uh, location for ECS, for ECS, not for nothing else. Yes, for ECS yes. For especially years. for us, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. But yeah, it was awesome to see people. And, and I had a two keynotes and, and well, which sounds super like, you know, huge, but the beauty of those both keynotes was that we are using a lot of other people as well. So it's not about the, I, I've never wanted to have, or personally, I don't like keynotes where it's just one person talking and showing slides and, and demos and all of that, because it's not as engaging comparing to have multiple people. And I think we, we cracked a nice new format as well. So with the Definitely. MS, MS keynote. So yeah, we, we, we heard from many folks that they really, um, enjoy the format where you know you are there as a host. You bring more folks on a stage, and they share their stories and visions and opinions and the things on which they work. And it's a really cool thing, right? Because you will get this nice overview across the board, across the different topics. That, like in our case, that would range from Microsoft Fabric to um, user profiles to yep. or uh, people systems. I think it's called nowadays. Yep. There are only yep. no more user profiles. <laughs> Sure, and then sure. we went all the way through dev and SPFX and teams. So it was a really nice range uh, that that we covered in a really organic way, right? Yep. So it was very, yep. very nice. I, I actually love the fact that it, well, to, to be, for those who are watching this and listening, uh, obviously those people have seen the show as well, but it's, it's we didn't, we never met. Uh, we did the whole uh, no, no, session no, no, no. planning asynchronously uh, without even having a meeting. And, and I think that's actually that the, well, the beauty of that one is that then it feels more natural. So it oh, you, yeah. you know it's not scripted, and there's no prompt, a data promptation or anything like that. It's just just you hey, like let's go with the. Yeah, well, both. <laughs> I've recently seen a conference as well where whenever the video or teletron goes, you know, broken or off, then the speaker gets completely stuck on the moment and cannot mm. continue because they rely on, on the teleprom. And that's not a yeah. good thing. That should never be the case. Uh, so, but again, if you're not super familiar with presenting, that might, you know, help. The challenge well, yeah. is that you sound artificial when you do that. So. Well, yeah, I mean, there's also this hard thing that I can imagine that for some audiences, for some events, we have this requirement where 
especially you know for the very big announcements where you want to be really sure what you say and what you don't say because sure. of legal and all of that you know so for sure. some things i can imagine that there is definitely a place for no like you need to say exactly these these three things and nothing else because yep. of reasons yeah but yeah this you know wasn't that right so it was true us true. you know a bunch of folks just telling about their story, their journey, their community engagement and and their work. And that worked out, I think, perfectly. Yeah, it, it worked out really well. And then we had another keynote, which was the community keynote with our MVPs. And that 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 wasn't exactly the same storyline, but pretty similar. And, and we actually in, intentionally, we we had all of the presenters who were doing the demos sitting on a stage for the whole time of the session, uh, which which makes People maybe were uh, sit on the stage and feeling bad, but actually it wasn't. It was super natural, and 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 there was a always an option to people heckle in as well, but nobody actually took an <laughs> advantage yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but... because you don't want to break the other person's flow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And maybe I don't know like how strict we were on time because that was exactly the yeah, Im- immediate sure. thing that popped to my mind. Like how cool would it be to have somebody show a demo and then talk about it for a minute or two, yeah. just to make it more interactive and get yeah. other people's opinion. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, that also cuts into the time, meaning maybe instead right. of five demos, we would only be right. able to do four. So yep. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Then you don't have it that much variance on between the demos and all of that. Yeah. Anyway, that was cool. That was really, really cool. Uh, good to be back from there as well. Now my conference season is, is done. Two more weeks work and then I'll be off for one week, which is looking forward on that. So that should be really, really cool. But for this week, uh, we have Leslie Crook uh, joining us. Uh, Leslie is a Cloudway, uh, works in Cloudway as a cloud consultant. She's also one of the original creators of the Viva Explorer. For, uh, <laughs> Viva Explorers. <laughs> English is hard. <laughs> yes. Viva Explorers. Explorer. Ex- why, why, uh, Friday, clearly. Um, anyway, so yeah, let's Sunday, jump on what? that. <laughs> yes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, and it's a Monaco Formula One GP weekend as well. Oh it's, it's, yes. It's oh, the most boring yes. tra- uh, race um, race within the year, but it's well, the most well, beautiful. Was it Typically, last year, like where Red Bull crashed during the uh, practice oh, or the uh, qualifier, right? So yeah. There's always stuff happens, but um, yeah. you can't really pass other cars in the in there. So it's exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, let's jump on the interview with Leslie and come back for the articles right after that. Excellent. So let's actually get started with Leslie. Uh, good to have you on the show as well. And, and as always, let's start with a quick intro. Who are you and what do you do for a living? Thank you. Thank you both for inviting me. It's really, really flattering because as I don't sit in the power platform um, world. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, MVP of hopefully going to be seven years. Um, that was an extra one that was given during <laughs> COVID or something or when we kind of went slightly out. So it's kind of six, six and a half. Hopefully it's yep. going to be seven years come July, fingers crossed. Um, I started, um, I, well, I... I can I, have I, a I, look on that, so let me know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> well, that would be that would be helpful. Um, yeah, so I'm um, with this accent. I'm in um, in the UK. I'm in the south of England in a, a place called Brighton by the Sea. It's a beautiful day today. Very lucky. Um, nice. Live there with my husband and my two dogs. But I work for a company called Cloudway, who are based um, out of Norway, and we I work with a, 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 I think it's eleven MVPs. Uh, so we're quite a boutique oh, nice. cloud um, partner, um, uh, gold partner. Um, and yeah, we're in Norway, UK, Finland, Sweden. Who have I missed out? Um, I'll probably get into real trouble that I've missed the country out. But um, yeah, we kind of like across across Europe, and we're all working from home. So, and my um, my MVP award is for office apps and services. But I specialise in the kind of uh, we yeah, came into the program with um, Yammer, now Viva Engage, and a big part of the Viva Suite. Um, and um, yeah, so um, it went from Yammer to Yammer Adopt adoption to um, then jumped on to um, Teams um, user adoption and change management and now stepping into helping customers appreciate the um, the benefits, the business benefits of the Viva Suite and co-pilots, dare I even yep. say that I'm, that Ooh, I, yes. I'm yeah, my, background right? of a, my background is a communications manager and that's where I started was an internal communications that I dare think that I can be 
getting my head around AI and co-pilot, but it's not as scary <laughs> as I as I as I thought that I've learned exactly. over the last month. So that's yep. me in a nutshell. <laughs> I, I, I have the, to say, I don't know that I'm sorry, sorry, Waldek. I, I'm doing a bit of a research as as you were saying that. I'm like, why didn't I check this? So Stoll, uh, you work with Stoll and Nikki is obviously your colleague as well, Nikki Chapel Chapel. Uh, Nikki has been helping with the Microsoft 365 uh, maturity model and all of that stuff within our uh, community areas. I, so now I'm connected. Now I understand who other yeah, people in the are. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> got it's the like, bearings. okay, now. Got the bearings, right? <laughs> this is that. This is amount of research we actually do on the show. Now I do feel bad. <laughs> what do you mean? I've, I've, I've got my notes. I've got my notes here. <laughs> yes. I did so uh, Nikki uh, on the yeah. ECS as well, but we didn't have a time to, you know, talk unfortunately. So there was a lot of lot of people this week in the uh, Dusseldorf. That was really cool. Yeah, anyway. I mean, two two thousand five hundred were that Correct. I mean that's Correct. astonishing, that awesome isn't show. it? Yes. Absolutely yeah. astonishing. Yeah. So yeah, c congratulations to uh um is it I can't pronounce his name. Is Ad Adios? Uh, Addis 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 Addis, Addis. Addis. Yeah, Addis congratulations, him yeah. and his uh, team um or if it was just him was astonishing so yeah i was following it on uh, on twitter it looked absolutely brilliant yeah. so yeah, yeah well done yeah that's what's really cool going back yes, going well. back to your work to the things you 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 said right because you said that you specialized in communications corporate com comms uh change management in the current world right because like last few years many many things have changed around the way we work like we got intelligence commoditized for everybody we got remote what is the across all the different things that uh, come across your your path? Like, what is the what are the, like three biggest challenges you see companies have the hard time with? Um, I think that the fact that I suppose it it goes down to maybe the the, the mobile phones that we've all got. We've all got these brilliant amazing devices in our in our hands now um and they've become like another limb if you lose that you leave it at home sure. you're like oh my god it's like i, I can't nothing. cope who am yeah. i yes. so i think that the, the the reasoning is that um we one minute on the left hand we are really sophisticated as users you know no one gets trained to use any of the apps on here you download them and off you go and then on the other hand, you go in, you're now sitting in front of a computer as I am here and, you know, I'm working and then you go like, I can't work anything. They've, they've, you know, I've been given this, these new things like teams or, you know, I've got these new apps. I don't know how they work. I can't make a post. How do you make a post on Yammer now, Viva Engage? But yeah. I can make a post on Facebook. I can share on Instagram. So you've got this strange paradox going on where in one breath the you know the the your your most of your employees your end users are are, are like oh i can't i can't use these new tools but on the other hand they're super sophisticated and they're flying and they're posting and they're making videos and they're tick tocking so that's i find that personally quite a strange um situation that that we're in which has been heightened i think by um by the the pandemic i think that suddenly you are um yeah teams went whoosh like that because people had to start being a bit more sophisticated in how they work because they were having to work from home so i think it's kind of beginning to level out in a way but equally um staff do need to know that they're empowered and they're entrusted and they are going to be given some degree of training on what tool to use when um, yeah. and that their um, you know their senior leaders or their their, their managers are happy for them to, to use these tools in you know in, in this way or that way so it's kind of like this strange it, um, situation that we're um, but it, we're it is in. an interesting paradigm as, as you say and, and the different is it because people are afraid of you know the, if it's a company thing it's my employer so so I cannot mess up. Uh, but if it's my phone, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, is it that the fear of impacting and making mistake? Is yeah. that that's probably then be, the, one of the yeah. key reasons? I think it might be for the fear of you know saying yeah, as you as you alluded to there, it's the fear of saying something you know online that's gonna that's gonna make you look stupid maybe yeah. that you don't know that much yeah. about right. it. But and I think a lot of maybe leaders might fear actually getting involved in conversations in yep. a collaborative way because they they're like I don't want to get involved in a you know in a maybe a shit storm of a conversation that might erupt but equally they are there to delegate they've got a team of people 
people and if they're not the complete experts in that specific area then they delegate at mention someone yep. in a post if they put something out there and then you know divert that conversation onto that person in that team that might be on the other side of the world that is the expert that does want to get into that um you know yep. that conversation because it's part of what their you know what their job is for so and and, and obviously that change management and training will eventually unblock the situation, but it's empowering the people on, on, on that it's, it's able to do. Now, I need to do a quick reference here and test an example. So I remember from a corporate fears, my mother used to work in a bank. So, and they used computers since starting from whatever, seven days. Um, but when she got the personal computer, it's like, no, I can't do anything. You have to come here. I can't do anything. I can do anything. Now, my mother-in-law, my wife's uh, mom, didn't work in a bank and they didn't have a computers which they worked on. When we bought a computer for her, I said, doesn't matter what you do with that. As long as you don't install randomly stuff from the internet, uh, I can fix it. So you do whatever you want, test yeah. things, do click, la, 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 empower the people to test around and do yeah. things. You cannot break things. Don't give your credit card or your bank details to anybody. You'll be good. And if it gets broken, I'll fix it. And and she is incredibly, incredibly well now trained as for <laughs> 80 year old uh, wow. a lady who had yeah. no experience yeah. whatsoever. But that's also the, the empowering people to experiment the as well experiments yeah. exactly test it out two things uh, get rid of that fear of what if i say something uh, i'm ac by an accident if i post a video where i say something which i shouldn't be saying or whatever so it's interesting yeah. challenge going back to when i worked at um, GSK as a communications manager and they we were introducing there was uh, enterprise social networking and they were trialing the IT guys were trialing different um, platforms it was I think they were looking at Jive um, there was an IBM one I can't remember what it was called maybe IBM Connect or something like that um, and then was Yammer and they were looking at you know different options but we were also concerned about you know um, uh, responsible responsibility online like Microsoft are now really focused on AI responsibility, you know, that's now a, a, a big deal. But, you know, going back, you know, um, about nearly 10 years ago, about the first time of allowing, um, you know, um, uh, you know, staff to, to put their own, put their own their self out there. Yeah. And uh, I think the first draft of this etiquette policy or user policy was about two pages long. It was full of bullet posts. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wow. <laughs> and then, then one of my colleagues, he said, actually, guys, I've heard a great policy from the BBC that they're telling their staff. Basically, don't share anything that would upset your mother or your boss. That was it. <laughs> no, we were like, oh, yeah, that yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's that, good. That, that's the fact that like you want people to think for themselves, and yes. they can't do that, right? It's it's not like you know, like oftentimes you will see this like um, legal thing, like do not wrap your food in a doormat. You know, like these weird things, like like nobody. Why would you do, do that? that? And yet we have this disclaimer because apparently, yeah. obviously, somebody tried it and sued well, somebody, and yeah, now we need, yeah. we need uh, yeah, uh, and we need that. Or like, don't try to dry your dog in a microwave. Like, who on earth would? Who well, on earth? Tried, <laughs> yes. And it didn't end up well, I guess. <laughs> Now, now, based on your, uh, Leslie, we talked about the change management and, and, and your, that's kind of the focus around. Of course, every single time you introduce an application, change management is a crucial piece of uh, a, for the projects to consider because it's otherwise people might be investing on Microsoft 365 and then nobody's using it or they're using just a fraction of the, 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 the cost or the value of what they could actually get for the same cost. What would be your kind of a tips uh, based on your years of experience of doing this? Uh, uh, any any kind of tips related on what would how would you approach these things? Would you always have a champions tip, champions team? Would you always have a pilots or what, what's your experience yeah. on that? Well, from um, the, the, over the eight years now that I've been um, a, a, a consultant um, in the you know in the cloud space, from Yammer to Teams and now Viva, um, I have kind of like worked my way through um, understanding the ad card change framework which is framework which is by um, an organization called ProSci in the US that's so, so you can become a ProSci certified um, ad card trainer so ad card basically stands for awareness desire knowledge ability and reinforcement and you can look this up and you can uh, see the model quite we'll a reference of, on the blog yeah, post, yeah. Lo lots Sorry. of examples of it so um, really to, to, to step you through this and I must say I'm going to step this through as quickly as possible 
simple. It's five steps. Um, but I, what I found is you don't have to do these things in this order. Um, and that's where I've, I actually have pulled out um, three success stories, customer success stories, and I gave a presentation in Vegas, and that's where um, uh, Vesta and I met um, about a month, what was it, three weeks ago? Um, yep. I'm still getting over my jet lag. <laughs> um, it's and, only three um, weeks. It is only <laughs> three. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's lots, so much is happening. Um, yeah. So um, from my... Um, yeah, experience over the last eight years, I've pulled out three really brilliant customer success stories, and they were big ones of where the they had the uh, um, kind of like a USP where they did things really well. So if you can now I got I've got real sites of um, you know like the per perfect change management scenarios because I've got some real experience of I was pulled deep down into some enormous organizations and you know help to make this happen so the first off is the awareness side of this and this is where you need to find your um your stakeholder um the, the person that's going to you know put their name to the communications that are going to go out across the company and going to going to walk the talk they're going to be seen to be trialing those new tools for you um but they are going to be they will you know, you want to get someone that's really quite senior um, and they're very, very busy. So you you want them to nominate someone from their team to delegate them to be your go to person on a regular basis to help you get your communications um, and, you know, introduce you to the right people in the company and get you, um, you know, booked into calendars and things like that to do presentations. Um, the next part of this is desire. Um, and this is where communications come in um, and employee engagement of, um, you know, how this is. Um, this is about changing the culture of your organization. This is the, the you know, a really big part that you're going to change behaviors in the company quite quickly. You want to shift them from, for example, being living in email to moving them to working in, you know, in Teams channels or to start using, um, you know, Yammer, Viva Engage, um, you know, and yep. get that understanding of when to use Teams, when you might still need to jump back into email because, you know, you're getting loads of activity notifications there. Or, of course, you need to talk to third parties that you can't reach through Teams. Um, and also when to get into the community if it's a big organisation and you want them to start using Viva Engage and all the goodness and, the you know, the the premium um, tools um, that are now the premium features that are now in Viva Engage and actually linked to Viva Topics, which I absolutely love um, yep. that, you, that that's going on um, with, with topics and tagging and everything. So you um, this is where you're going to build out you're going to start working with your internal comms people that's they're going to help to build that communication plan right across the company they're going to give you that site of which channels they use in the business this is where viva amplify that should be um coming with us by probably towards the end of the year um it's being um experimented at this time across some very big organizations um uh, by microsoft so um that's your basically going to manage all your um the, the the channels and the audiences that are going out across your company you can select which ones you're going to that's that's how i understand it's going to work then you might do some persona profiling here where you it will interview um um a cross section of the business right across the roles to get an understanding of the persona owners in your business. Um, from my experience of doing this, you can end up with maybe three to seven persona profiles. Uh, you don't really need any more than that. And what you can get from that is an understanding of the frustrations and challenges in your business. Um, it will give you an idea of where you can take them next with the, the tools you're trying, trying to introduce. But it's also the perfect place to then uh, pinpoint the training that's needed for those roles and also the um, the licensing as well, because you might have um, some people in there that might need maybe, you know, um, I'm not very good on licensing because it's not the thing I get involved with, but you might need someone that's like a business analyst. So they need, I don't know, the E5 or yeah. something. Or, but equally, you're going to have frontline workers in there that need, you know, don't need so much of the, you know, sophisticated um, premium um uh, features and everything so that will give the, the that business an idea of the kind of licensing they need and the type of training they need and training could be anything from lunch and learns to webinars to uh, what we call white glove where I might do a one-to-one -one with a um, you know a, a senior leaders admin assistant they kind of work quite well you might it's good to give them you know um, a real focus just the, the you know one-to-one -to -one together then from that you kind of establish kind of like the personas in the business the training then you can start building out your champion network Network, which you've already uh, mentioned, Vesa. So what I've learned um, from um, 
a, a, a customer that I work with, which was the Department of Work and Pensions in the UK during the pandemic. So that was a massive um, uh, exercise um, engagement. Um, and um, what I learned from one of the architects there, a guy called Stephen Wade, who works in, in the um, uh, for a partner in the UK, he actually said instead of um, uh, asking staff to volunteer to be champions or being volunteered by the bosses. Look at the productivity scores, look in the um, uh, who's using the tools really well in the company already. You know that you might have had it going in IT for maybe a while or one particular department. Look actually who's already maybe over a three month period is suddenly flying with these tools. Their email has gone down, the, the tools have actually gone up. You've probably already got champions in the business and you're not even aware of it. Um, so yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I know that was like absolutely brilliant. So then, um, then it's um, yeah, you run, you start to build out your training, um, which is done often by you know partners to you know if it's um, or we do maybe run maybe one or two training sessions. They can be recorded. They can then be used for like um, part of the new hire process to bring them up to speed really quickly. And before you know it, your new hires are your champions because they're doing everything properly, um, right. and they think everyone else is they think that's yeah. how everyone else is working um but before l long they are actually the champions really quickly um you capture feedback as soon as possible after you've done that training using maybe microsoft forms so you can continuously improve um you know and make sure that that training is is hitting the mark then you want to cut at the end of this so we've gone through awareness desire cap, um, knowledge of how to change ability to implement um the skills and behavior i am reading this off of off of here because this is a lot to remember <laughs> this yeah. is the adcar framework i'm going through here so and then at the end of it it's about reinforcement and the reinforcement yep. side of this is capturing capturing customer success stories. So that's what inside the, of the company and telling those forward to the company, right? Yeah, so. but also using um, existing success stories that might be in a, uh, in a, uh, from another business that's in the yep. same sector as you. Yep. That's why the stories that Microsoft catch um, yep. um, and curate, I think inside track and the customer success teams, that's why yep. they're so important that those stories are told so that others that are in the same sector can see, oh, if they can do it, then we can do it. You know, like in exactly. banking, exactly. in pharmaceuticals, where it's really, um, uh, you know, restricted and, um, what's the word, I um, can't remember the word, right word for it, but it's really, um, you know, tightly governed yep. um, that they think, oh, we can't do this. We can't, you know, and German works councils and the works councils yep. around the world. So if you can see like, oh, they did it, they're flying with this, then why shouldn't we be doing it yeah. as well? So um, that's where it's the corporate engaged. level FOMO, yeah. right? So corporate yeah, yeah, company level yeah. FOMO. So yeah. we don't want to miss out. So. Yeah, so you might have someone maybe that's in um, uh, in R and D that are doing it really well, but there's you know parts of the business maybe manufacturing or yeah. um, corporate they're not using these tools well. But if you start telling those stories and you get a great quote from a leader that it's working really well, um, then you start getting that kind of envy going on and like, well, if they yes. can do it, then we can do it, sort of yes. thing. So it's yes. using internal and external and stories as yeah. well. So because, uh, uh, of course, yeah. in a VP level, you want to you, you know VP vice president level you want to have a one vice president which tells the other vice presidents that Haha, we are using all of these tools and we're being super successful <laughs> you should catch it so yeah and then the human behavior yeah for sure yeah, exactly and then at the, the end of all of this or not at the end but maybe all the way along reward and recognize the great work yes and that's you know you can do that across um microsoft 365 there's lots of ways to praise instantly in the moment um but most companies have got their kind of reward system as well so make sure that you remember to use that so that's basically um adcar are we now certified <laughs> are we now certified here yeah, sorry <laughs> you get a star you get a star <laughs> no 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 i i guess the, the training is a bit more uh, intense with that final exams and all of that to get at car certified but that's a set, separate discussion now that's actually really really cool i'm just watching the time because there's one topic which we didn't want to uh, miss which is also as part of this this work you're an mvp you've been doing a presentation in las vegas las vegas being the microsoft 365 uh 
conference, which was happening in the early uh, May. Uh, I think, well, it's actually technically started in April, end of April, but still, anyway, uh, on the pre days. <laughs> it's been a uh, really busy month. <laughs> it's 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 been yes. Uh, I'm just waiting for the vacation week to come in two weeks. Uh, anyway, but you've been also involved in the Viva Explorers, um, and what is this then? Uh, you're an MVP. You have that. You do things, and then Viva Explorer. It has a website. Is it a company? What does it actually do? Can you explain that? Um, for the it's audience? a movement. There we go. Yes, <laughs> we are not. We didn't want to. We didn't want to kind of put ourselves in um, a um, make it kind of like a clique. We didn't want it to really be just MVPs, but we had to yes. start somewhere. So about a year and a half ago, um, I made my first presentation. I think it was at, um, maybe the South Coast Summit in the UK, and I tried to explain Viva for the first time. And this was going back like. Yeah, a year and a half ago, maybe 18 months ago. And I was really nervous because I'm not my background's not super technical. And I'm like thinking, do I really know what I'm talking about here? So um, I don't think it was a very good presentation, but I don't think anyone else was really talking about it at that time. <laughs> but at the conference, I did meet Sarah Fenner, who um, had just become um, an MVP. She's yeah. a long-standing Microsoft certified trainer of about 20 years. She was starting to talk about Viva as well. So the two of us put our heads together and we started to co-present and then I gave us little kind of like personas and I became the Viva visionary because I'm always really excited about stuff you can't even do yet like um, Viva Amplify. Viva Amplify, and, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah so. I get really excited about things like you can't actually do it yet but I like the yeah. idea of it but Sarah is the realist because she yeah. will talk about what you can do in the setup and she trains people on what you can do. So I felt like in a good place that we were covering each other off and then um uh, I work at Cloudway and I work with my lovely colleague Maretta Starver and then she joined us and I I, I named her uh, if she wanted the name and she loved it um, the Viva Navigator because Maretta's really good at <laughs> focusing on the M365 roadmap and it's yep. grown from there to now nearly a hundred of us including yep. um, friends from Microsoft who are former MVPs um, and that are really you know got the fire in the belly and the understanding of you know they may be focusing on different product areas but they really understand you know the, the, the great benefits of Viva so we've got some people now from Microsoft that are joining us and we've also got friends of Viva Explorers who are in the partner network but they're they're not MVPs. Um, yeah. So we to be really an MV, a Viva Explorer, you have to be an MVP or work at Microsoft or be an RD because then we operate under the same NDA and we can talk quite um, quite yeah, openly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But we are running events all around the world now. Um, we've got um, Viva Around the World coming up, which is being organised by Kevin McDonald. That's on the 2nd of June. And that's basically sunrise to sunset around the world. We've got people from Microsoft. Um, um, that are now um, going to be presenting. So it'll be in four tracks, which is the four themes of um, Viva with um, the tracks are connections, purpose, growth and insights. Yep. And there's different uh, three different types of um, presentation in there from I think from setup, adoption and um, uh, I can't remember what the other. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll reference uh, yeah, the yeah, anyway, yeah. definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of uh, like, yeah, how to set it up or how you've adopted it, and then kind of like success stories as well. I think that's kind of like the um, yeah. the three. So, um, so yeah, that's about going to be, well, I don't know how many presentations that, probably about 80 um, presentations that will be over that 24 hours. And then we've got Converse coming up, um, the UK um, yep. Weybridge um, in, um, in 21st to 22nd of June, and we've actually got the Viva Explorers track. Cool. Yeah. Um, coming back on, that, that, that's a lot of information, but coming back on the Viva. Um, so actually, I'm in an organization. Uh, you're referenced on a power platform somewhere, but I'm not actually in the power platform, and neither is, is Waldeck. So, but it's always complicated for oh. we actually oh, do okay. right, So right. Uh, my organization is responsible for Viva Connections, uh, Viva oh, okay. Amplify, and Viva Topics. Uh, but that's that's a really good example of, of how the Viva is a bit different. Um, and, and Viva, we as a Microsoft, we position Viva more as a business for business decision makers rather than traditional way how Microsoft sells the software, which is licenses and technology. And, and you can, you know, there's this cool technical features like, no, 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 we, we, we are moving now to a new area with Viva offerings, which is something which we actually haven't done uh, in the past. And, and knowing, for example, some of our competitors, staff based being a good example, um, the, the audience is completely different. It's just a 
really hard even for Microsoft to adapt to that audience messaging line. And, and that comes back on, Leslie, what you were explaining related on, well, it was a really hard to explain what is Viva and what does it actually do? Because we tell it's an employee platform. And then immediately when we say platform, it associates on development extensibility and everything else. But it's like, no, 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 you don't have to do any of that. So because only one of them are done. actually extensible. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's all done. But it, it, it is an interesting dilemma. How would you sum, summarize what is Marius Microsoft Viva? What's your code, you know, well, your lines? It's, or it's will this funny. take like 20 minutes? <laughs> no, because I've actually got this thing called Viva Origami. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, Viva Origami is basically what we used to use in the playground as kids. And on yep. the top there, it starts as connections, insights, purpose, and goals. Can you see that yep. quite? Yeah, yep, yep, and then yep. I go, say I go to like, well, what's under Nurture Connections? And I've got Viva Engage Amplify, which then goes Yammer and SharePoint under yep. there. So that's kind of, so the, basically the building of this, if I take this and open it up completely, I should have had one that I've... Is this something quick. from Viva, Viva Explorers, by the way? So, no, this is or, mine. Okay, cool. So <laughs> basically the unifying framework yeah. I took that because it's really complex yep. and I rewrote it on there and I made it simple. Cool. That's it's actually really, really that, cool. It's that everything really. that's on there, which is complex. And I'm basically saying make the complex simple. And then yep. at the heart of it, it says discover Viva in the flow of your work for a better employee experience on Teams. Yeah. So that's my... Is it that um, kind of the job of consultants, by the way, making make the complex things simpler. So you're ex well, spot on doing the... the, the yeah. Yeah. Sure, yes. <laughs> yes. But what, what I, so I give this out in all of my talks usually it doesn't work very well on a screen like this because usually yes. like in Vegas when I start in the session the session I did with Stoller we give these out to people we get them to actually make it you know as part of the session and at the end of it you can fold it up and you can put that in your pocket yep. and then that it's it's not going to change the world but it's a conversation starter and yep. it's basically the, the other way I explain Viva is there's four themes as I've as I've mentioned but equally talking about Nikki Chapel early, because I always think of Nikki when I do this. Yep. This is in the palm of my hand. It's safe, secure, it's compliant. Then the creases here are the team's channels that you know yep. take you into all of this. So that's kind of like how I explain Viva to like a 12 year old, I suppose, sort of thing. Yep. Um, and um, uh, yeah, and I designed that um, now probably leading up to so in October last year yep. thinking it wouldn't last long because Microsoft yep. are going to uh, keep up but actually it still works yeah, yeah actually yes. everything everything I've got on there um is other than glint yeah because it's that that framework hasn't really changed and then you could say like the biggest thing that's missing is co-pilot but that is true True. That's all overarching. Over yeah, exactly. All over yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So yes. that's that's given me the confidence to talk about Viva in that hybrid, connected, um, integrated way. But yep. I started the first time I tried to do this, I used a Rubik cube, but that was too expensive um, to give out at conferences. Yes, but this exactly. is just a piece of paper. So no, no, no. But that's that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that is really a cool. really great way of simplifying things as well. So because I, I like you said, even as a consultant, well, me and Walter have, have consulting roles in the past and history. I was even eight years consultant in Microsoft uh, before I joined on engineering. But it's 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 really all about trying to explain the value of these things and products in a simplistic way so that people can then they can start looking into okay so what are the actual features and capabilities traditionally unfortunately microsoft is we've been pretty bad at this uh, maybe it's always been a partner opportunity right so we <laughs> offload that to partners but it, yeah. the, the messaging is is complicated for sure but but in essence most of it is sharepoint and exchange behind of the scenes but that's yeah. technology and that's yeah. that's not of course it's not a that's that's one of the things what we so traditionally fail as a microsoft we always go to the customer and start talking about individual products or apis or uh, the the services and i said no 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 what does it do for me well it, it, it's sharepoint it's teams no 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 what does the teams give us as a company what do i actually gain what are the scenarios what is the 
the, the value of what it actually provides. Yeah. Um, and but, that but gets I'm more talk, difficult. But I have found that talking to some IT customers, they when they hear Viva, they're like, oh my God, have we got to buy all this new stuff? We've got to throw away yeah. what we've existing, you know, what we've already, and we go like, no, you just build on SharePoint, improve yes. SharePoint. And, you yes. know, for Viva Insights, it's pulling from Exchange and it's, you know, it's, yep. You know, it's it's everything that's that's in your calendar and your um and your email. It's not taking it from anything else. It's only what you can already see. And they're like, oh, is that what it is? It's kind of abstraction <laughs> layer on top of those individual applications, and then the more business driven offerings yeah. and and actual business uh, value, which is which is actually really good. I'm super excited still. Uh, we still need to fine-tune some of the messaging uh, in some of the stuff and and getting the products a bit more mature and and also Viva Amplify is a good example that yeah. you need to ship it. So Yeah, and you're going to need different types of champion depending on which theme I think that you're looking at because yeah. for Viva Connections, obviously you're going to need people with SharePoint expertise, but it, but for Viva Topics, you just need subject matter experts True. To, to go through because I've actually just done this for Cloudway in the last week um, to go through and you know, start selecting the topics that are relevant and then creating some pages that we haven't already got. And then before yeah. I knew it, I'm like, I'm a topics champion, but I'm not, I didn't set up, you know, the, the topics admin center that was done by yeah. the likes of Nikki and Stoller and Moretta. But I am now, you know, regarded subject matter expert. I was asked to check off these pages. It took me half an hour. And I'm like, that is so impressive that yeah. it was that simple. Yeah. Now, uh, we need to close up in a second, but I, I want to ask, I, or I want to ask at least one question, I'm not sure about Waldek, uh, but uh, if he has anything on, on his, oh, yes, there's always question. Um, how do you get to be Leslie on the Leslie's role? So how do you get to be a change consultant? So if there's somebody watching the show or listening to the show and be like, I always wanted to be, or what, what, how do I get to do that kind of work? That sounds really interesting, working with the largest customers in the world and, and helping them to adapt things. What's the journey? My word, because my journey has been so, um, um, I've, and I've worked for now probably four or five partners um, over the last eight years and often, um, you know, I've work, just worked on one big project and then that's come to an end and then um, very quickly I've been picked up by another one and then um, it's different the next time I go into another partner they've got something else that you want to focus on so what I found is that by going through the partner network um, and uh, meeting the MVPs that are part of that partner network, I've grown along the way. And each time I've started to work with a different partner, I've learned something else really important about change management and adoption that I didn't know before. So it's actually taken me all this time as, as a consultant to be able to, you know, develop something like that which is actually quite True. simple which is actually quite complex on the back yes. of it yes. and being able to um, describe ADCAR and step through but it's only because I've worked on some really big customer programs I was on you know worked at GSK for I was there a full-time staff for like 20 years so it's everything I learned there I also had um, being within the company I, I took um, Lean Sigma Six Sigma training as part of the company as, as well so there was that whole mindset that I was getting about cutting out wasteful ways of working and you know um, continuous improvement so that was kind of like instilled in me but that was weird because I, I worked in communications and then to go on to I worked did some work with the NA NHS and then I went on and did this massive piece of work as part of a, a 45 strong team for the Department of Work and Pensions and each time I learned a different massive part of change yep. management so it's not um, an easy thing I think to get your head around you I think it comes from experience yep. um, I don't think you can jump into something like this immediately um, but um, yeah, and it, there's different touch points from it as well. Yeah, you need to be a good communicator. You need to have that, obviously, that IT knowledge, that technical knowledge as well. Um, but, um, and you, yeah, you need to understand how an organisation ticks. The whole, um, you know, spread of the, you know, the different massive departments, the support functions, yeah. you know, and the understanding of what that business is in, in, in an organisation. Of course, the corporate layer across the top as well. So, um, okay. um yeah, so it's been a long kind of a, a long journey, but I, it's been I'm really glad that I stuck with it and I'm here now and I get invited to 
talk with people, have chats with people like amazing people like you. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky to have you on the show, um, having amazing people like you on the show. So that's that's really very really cool. Now. Before we close, anything interesting what's happening this week? Uh, what's what's kind of you don't need to say customer names or anything interesting, or are, is it relaxing after conferences or Friday is it almost three p.m. Friday, well not this UK. week, next week. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> well, fine. Uh, what, what's next some... on your kind of a schedule and agenda? Is anything interesting? Well, so. Monday, I think we've got a bank holiday, public holiday in in the UK, and I think some other European cities have got it as well. As well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, um, and then um, I'm actually next week, following up from Vegas, I've got I've got some calls to follow up on for um, the Microsoft Cloud Incentive Workshops, the MCI cool. Workshops, which um, was wonderful that, um, you know, we've, I've got started some conversations in Vegas about that and some customers have now come back and said, we'd like to have a chat with you because I, basically my, my job at Cloudway is really focused on um, running the Viva Discovery Workshops yeah. and that whole process. So, um, yeah, I really love doing that. It was so interesting. You get in with a customer, you get in, you know, understand an organisation really fast, um, understand their frustrations and challenges and then yeah. you're helping them to um, see the business benefits of using, you know, uh, firstly, they've got to use Teams a lot better than they're probably using it. Got to yep. take a step back before you can take a step forward to start using Viva. Oh, it's more so, than the um, chat. No, just kidding. So. <laughs> 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 That's the typical thing. It's more than the chats. Wow. Um, or then the alternative with Teams uh, is that why do you have 200 Teams? Why are why you? Anyway. So yeah, and trying to, yeah, and it's the sweet spot now of encouraging them to say, look, Viva Engage, you know, Yammer's definitely here to stay. Start using Viva Engage, start using topics in Viva Engage yeah. and start paying it forward to when you will eventually everyone I think will start using Viva Topics. I think it's just going to be a slow burn that it, eventually the visionary, she says, that's what I think is going to happen yeah. with yeah. co-pilot. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Well, like any any quick recaps on what's happening to you for next week? Uh, oh, you're setting oh, up the so hackathon is, things. Yeah, yeah. Next week is really big, right? So on June one, we're launching a virtual hackathon that around is, yeah. uh, building next apps week. for Microsoft Teams. So that's going to be big. So that is like less month month of work, maybe even more, led to that. So it will be a great moment. Like we have great folks to speak to launch it to do the keynote massive so that is like i can't wait to do that uh for, for it to start we will have mvps community experts folks from ecs even being uh judges in one of the the categories right giving away a, a, a prize too so really really cool event for the community to really get it, get it together and learn how to bring custom apps to teams and work even more effectively Really, really cool. Uh, quickly recapping on my side, just to the notes as well. So um, I'm now done with the conference season, which is great in Las Vegas, as Four you said, weeks. Leslie, as well. It's like, yeah, but it's the, the May has been pretty busy. It's It's been pretty amazing. Uh, but it's it's good now. I have two weeks and then I finally have some time off, which is something what I've been waiting for because yeah, there's, there's so much to do. And, and of course, a lot of planning happens uh, for next fiscal because Microsoft works from July to June always. So now we're in the end of this fiscal and then reset and then we again do planning on the next 12 months. Uh, no idea why, how did we end up doing July, June? It makes <laughs> no sense, you know. So. <clears throat> because that always is the question internally on the, we're going to do this uh, in which calendar year? And people are saying 2024 20, and 23. And you're like calendar year or FI year? That's so year because it's different yeah. then. Yeah. So it's it's confusing. And then it at some is. point they were started using the the chemistry. Uh, what are those? The, the, the elements. Elements, elements. Uh, elements as the, now it's the nickel. It's a semester, oh, and you're like, what does no. that mean? Oh, no. <laughs> We're planning this for the carbon. I have no idea what is carbon. No. <laughs> yeah, let, let me decrypt that for you. Exactly. Decoder ring, right? Yes. Anyway, that's it for, for the show. Thank you, Lester, for joining. There would have been so much more to talk about. Uh, we'll get I you know, back on the show. I know, sorry. We will get no, you no, back. No, no, okay. no, we will get you it's back. The more subject, the reason to have right? you back on the show. Yes. I love the fact I can say this out loud at this point. So when it, just before we started recording, we needed to go. No, no, shut up, shut up, shut up. Let's shut up. <laughs> no, <laughs> was, no, just... no, we we want that on record. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah yes. don't say that now. Keep it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but it's 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 always the good sign of uh, having the 
well, let's say, uh, uh, can, fun can within a show. Add- can Absolutely, I just add, 100%. Could I just want, add one thing that um, being an MVP and being a speaker, what I found is that I'm no longer nervous about getting up and speaking. What I'm nervous about is running out of time. Yeah, yes, nah. yes. That, that's well, a good thing. What, 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 is really, what is really cool about that, I learned, is that if you don't put it all on slides, you have the ability to like cut cut it short Adjust. like whenever you, yes. you yeah. run out of time you have, because nobody else can tell whether you are on time or not it's yeah. only in your yeah. head because they cannot see yes. it yeah they yeah, don't so know what you're going to say so. Exactly. exactly so whatever exactly. you said it was, it, was, it was meant to be said like yeah exactly exactly <laughs> comes back on the our ESS keynote for last week uh where we had six that people doing time. demos was, and everything else so it was on time that was but we never rehearsed that we never met we we did the whole thing and planning and in preparation asynchronously uh, using teams uh, but there was not even meetings and until that morning we actually were like okay Dun, dun, dun. And then as part of the, the fact that it wasn't really about slides and having bullet points and everything else, you can adjust. You can always flow within the time because, as I said, I think that's a really good way of saying that. They do not know what you were planning to say. Uh, exactly. So you yeah. can adjust that. So Cool. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll, we'll jump on the weekly articles uh, right after the Leslie and this Leslie interviews for those who are sticking along uh, within the show. But thank you, Leslie, joining on the on the call. Thank really, you really very cool discussion. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Cheers. Excellent. So thank you, Leslie. One more time on the discussion. Really cool to have a have a discussion about the, the business driven things as well, because obviously this show is not just about extensibility. We we try to be more versatile, right? And diverse <laughs> within this show. We do. We do. I know do. nothing. I know that people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but it's uh, even though you would, if you write code or extensibility, you have to know the basics and have to know how um, the functionalities are working and also how it's being positioned for the end users and, and customers. Yeah. And that's a critical piece of things. So. Exactly right. I mean, to rephrase a famous action film, like having the license to dev is also having the license to know when not to dev. Yeah. Yes, that is true. That's good. I think, yeah, we can probably say that name because we will get sued by AWS, who nowadays owns the rights to that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. MGM. Today I learned. MGM is owned by AWS. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Not AWS technically, but but Amazon. So Amazon bought uh, the the rights for MGM, and MGM owns James Bond rights, and therefore. And you just said it. Oh, dude. And now we're getting sued. Oh, my God. (laughs) No, just kidding. But let's jump on the weekly articles. Uh, Quite a lot of stuff Um, again this week from Microsoft. I wonder why. Why why was that again, (laughs) Patek? I think because that that is the summer that, no, the sun was at the highest point. No. Yes, absolutely. And well, it's not yet. Oh, the, yeah, this the... thing. Yes, there was this big <laughs> event in the US. Uh-huh. Yes. So uh, during this week, there was a, a bit of an unfortunate scheduling thing. Uh, so EZS was overlapping with Build, and that's because Build dates were announced really late this time. Um, but um, it is what it is, and, and we had people in Build and also in ECS, which is really, really cool. Now, uh, this is the primary uh, Build uh, page where you can actually find all of the latest Build videos and announcement to keynotes and all of that. And I think it's fair to say that the main theme of the build was um, AI and, and integrations and automation and extensibility in AI as well across the stack. So uh, we we had not announced AI in Windows and Copilot in Windows, so that was announced. There was a lot of other things as well, and, and also how you can build your own plugins uh, to uh, the open AI and, and the chat GPT. Oh, sorry, the Copilot. Copilot, Copilot. yes. Copilot, Copilot. <laughs> Good, but a lot of other cool stuff in here uh, and a great announcement. Now, if you are looking into what was announced and what a great news, um, the book of news is always the right way to do that. Um, historically, we've always done this and I, it's good that it's getting actually better and better because some years it was just a PDF and <laughs> nowadays at least it yeah. has a structure. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, if you look at the size of the scroll, scroll bar on the right hand side, you can see how yeah, long I can. this page is. Yeah, that's it's all of the news the and way. announcements yeah. uh, within the bill. Now, this is one of the reasons, for example, that some organizations do not use built anymore as the core time to announce features um, because it doesn't. It, 
if you're not in the top five announcement features in build, um, nobody will not notice what you announced. Uh, so it's actually better to wait for a one week or do it week before because you get actually more worldwide visibility on that. Unless you are one of the main announcements, main things that in the, which are getting announced, uh, like a Copilot extensibility this year. Um, and then that actually had an impact even in Microsoft stock, which is pretty positive. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Cool. Let's actually move on to other uh, articles. Uh, to this one, you want to talk about this one, Waldek? Exactly right. So it's basically exactly as you say. Like uh, yep. one, one of the announcements that we had was about extending AI, right? Because one thing that we've already announced earlier this year was uh, the whole idea of AI being co-pilot and being your your assistant, but then being available in in the products that we built. Yep. But I. I as big of a leap as that was, it's still limited to what we li limited in a way to what we have to offer. And if there's yep. one thing that we know is that platform is really big on Microsoft, right? So it's it's a really important area, right? like bringing along partners, uh, ISVs, and giving them the ability to tie into everything that we build and offer their services too, right? So this is kind of the steps where we outline some of the vision that we've got around what are the different ways in which they can plug into the AI offerings that we build and integrate with that, bringing their, their uh, apps along? Yeah, absolutely. This is really, really, really cool and a lot of capabilities. And I think that the last line here was really, really good as well. I noticed that already. Uh, but we have everything you need for Azure for making a co-pilot. So, so basically for anybody who is looking into doing their own co-pilots and AI integration within their application, and that's the Azure Open API, Open yeah. AI. Uh, is it Open AI? Azure Open AI. Yes, yes, it is. I think it is. It is. Anyway. Friday, my brain is, is starting to melt uh, after this week, uh, having too many discussions with too many people. So, you know, uh, capacity or hitting that capacity weekend yeah. uh, cannot come any any sooner cannot come any sooner. That didn't make any sense. I'm sorry. It, it makes now, sense. <laughs> we can I know play. exactly what anyway. you mean. Two, two minus three hours. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, introducing Microsoft Teams support, Microsoft 365 for target release commercial cloud customers seems a really complex way of saying that we are introducing a similar targeted release capability as we've been having, for example, in SharePoint Online uh, for many, many years, more than a decade. So you, you can actually opt in on getting the latest and greatest immediately, or you can say, no, let the other people to do that. We will minimize the change management and, and do, do that a bit delayed. So really, really good options and settings. And this one is also interesting. Uh, uh, my, Microsoft Mesh, transforming how people have come together in the modern workplace. So is Mesh still a thing? What's your thoughts uh, on well, that? Well, apparently, apparently it is. Um, <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> announced it again, so it's it's been around for a while, right? Like we've yep. we've talked about it, I don't know for how long now already, and apparently there is still some in, interest in that. Um, yep. I don't know, I'm split. Like to be honest, like if I because I'm remote forever, I am used to like showing up on camera and seeing real yeah. folks yeah. and yeah. seeing avatars is just not my thing. But that's just me. There's yep. my opinion. There's my preference. I can imagine there's a bunch of other folks who prefer that and who want that immersive experience. So it's really cool that we offer that uh, ability. And there's yep. also a uh, way for devs to integrate their work in that too. So if sure. anything else, I think sure. it's intriguing. It's a great thing for uh, partners. And I am interested to see how it will play out. Yeah, absolutely. And and like you said, the developer base is kind of interesting. So within every single company, you can now build your own immersive spaces. So you can design that space where people will be then having meetings. And that's actually really, really cool. So, um, and and of course, we all know probably who are watching the show as well. And we've been going up and down with the with the focus on, on mesh and virtualization and virtual realities and all of that. Uh, I think Facebook now finally said, no, no, that's no longer a thing. Now we're AI driven company again. They have a lot of data, so it's kind of interesting as well. Um, um, but let's see if that can, will come back. It's it's been yeah. promise of the future for a long time, actually. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we are about to see a device from uh, Apple. Uh, yeah, Apple too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it will be interesting True. to see like how, if at all, that that will have influence on the whole space. Yeah, typically huh. that is the final. Yeah, that's that's when it truly takes off. I, I still love the fact that 
this thing, well, this is the pro thing, but the, the, these things, which you have in your yeah, ears as well, mm-hmm. have a higher revenue than was it Intel, NVIDIA, whatever, together. So it's just, just this, it's 21 billion yeah, in a year. It's just yeah, mind boggling. It's, it's just a so, very big audience. It's a very oh, yeah, yeah, big absolutely. audience. But it, yeah, but it's, it's again, that- And you that, tend to lose them. Yeah. Well, that's true. And but Apple was the one who made them really mainstream, and now have a lot, a lot, like a lot of other else, options. Everything else, like so. mobile phone. And true, true. Many other no, things. No, we so, had mobile yeah. phones before this, of course, yeah, but still. But, but. But they were not smartphones. Maybe fair point. Yeah. Now, uh, or maybe they were anyway. Um, <laughs> not so smartphones. Now, <laughs> this is from the team's blog. Uh, we were debating, should we actually even show this? Because we couldn't understand what this is all about. So now get the right work done uh, at the right time. Task automation for your frontline uh, front with Microsoft Teams. So we do have an APIs uh, which are related on business scenarios. And with business scenarios, you can assign tasks and those tasks can be then targeted through Microsoft Teams for the end users. So that's kind of the overall storyline. But then we started, re- no offense for the for Andrew, we started reading the blog post and everything. It, a picture would have been a nice or something which gives a bit more structure on the, on what, what, what's the benefit out of that? So how do I use Are that? They, what well, is it? So, so like maybe, maybe it's just my ignorance and maybe it's like, it's something so specific to an audience that if you are true, in there, true. well, that means that, yes. that it's not a, a relevant thing for you, but Absolutely. it's really, really hard to, you know, like, what, is this something that I could use or is it? Because it's hard to say, like, what is a business scenario and yeah. how does that fit in? So maybe it's just, maybe, maybe we, or I missed a blog post that explains that. Yep. Um, yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, well, uh, initial yeah. so announcement yeah, there is, but yeah. probably is there, and we'll have a look on that. I w- that's if in the in the article. All the way down, I think I've seen there a link, the AKMS link planner business uh, scenarios. Uh, well, yeah, we maybe can, there's the, have a look the, on the this, initial post. So maybe this is maybe the initial post. A better... Nope, that's not the one which I was actually opening. This one. Business it's about for planner. planner. Okay, there so we're go. creating planner. Okay, so it's only for planner, but of course planner is getting surfaced in the teams. Okay, now it makes sense. And the business scenario is a planner. Uh, what is it? A, a container, and then within container you create tasks and all that. Gotcha. Ha. Ah, now it's ah. Uh, there we go. There's the picture. That's not a good picture. <laughs> it's a transparent. It's a transparent, so it doesn't work in yeah. the black. But basically, it's a business scenario. Then inside there, there's a planner plan, and then there's a test. Okay, test. Now, now it makes sense. Cool. There we go. It wasn't too hard, right? Um, Read the manual as as always. Yeah. Again, it was it was us. It was us definitely not yes. the author. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, frontline workers using shared Android devices can use Outlook, Edge, and Viva and Cage and Power Apps. So the point point here is that if you have frontline workers which are sharing a device, they can now more easily and efficiently uh, share those devices and still access the company relevant company information. And that's actually really really cool. So again, cost savings and and this is quite a typical scenario in frontline workers and uh, workers. So. Just yep. a getting then the, the signing in, and you'll have the isolated information just for that user. Seems like a no-brainer, but hey, um, you will need to design that probably in the applications, so you're not sharing exactly. the same memory and storage space. So really, really cool. And off. <laughs> and off. And off. Absolutely. Now, create and customize your org chart using new capabilities in Visio for web. So, and this one is new uh, from Microsoft 365 side. Uh, so we are evolving Visio as well, and there's new capabilities uh, available there, which is actually really cool as well. So things are evolving uh, for sure. That doesn't look yeah. like a Visio in web though. No, it does actually. It is Visio in web. It is. That's the... Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I wonder. I wonder if there's an option to like point to you a user in AAD and it's like, like, draw this two levels down. Oh, that would be really, really cool. Absolutely, 100%. Because we, so, you have the info already in AAD, yeah. right? So why yeah. like do it manually and then maybe you want to, you know, format and align yeah, and format that afterwards. Right, but yeah, you've got absolutely. the data already. The, the, the starting point, not as an active chart, but as a, a tron chart, which you yeah. can, yes, exactly. So yeah, that's actually a really cool idea. See, I'll add a note and we will contact the team and we'll let them know, right? Uh, uh, Catherine Hammervold, uh, 
had an new blog post uh, uh, around Microsoft Search, connecting you to knowledge and expertise, and basically updates related on uh, the, the Microsoft Search capabilities um, with the recent announcement of Semantics Index for Copilot. It will actually have a big, 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 um, let's say, impact on the information which is visible in a Copilot as well. That is a bit older video, uh, but uh, it's good to double check that one out to understand the importance and the investments areas within the within the search as well. And search is evolving, which is really, really cool. So yeah. constantly more and more investments here as well. Now, uh, empowering every developer with, with plugins for Microsoft 365 Copilot, and this comes back on the extensibility in Microsoft 365 Copilot. Um, obviously, we always have multiple blog posts to talk about these things, um, but there's a nice video as well explaining uh, how they actually are working, So, which is you cannot hear the, the audio, uh, but basically what it is, how it works and all of that within one minute and 40 seconds, which is really, really cool. So um, so that actually helps on understanding the basics of the structure. Let me actually add that one there. Now, uh, then uh, Ben had a blog post as well related on build announcements. Exactly, right? So this is a nice summary post for all the different announcements that we had across collaborative apps right, and M365. So yep. instead of having 10 posts across the board and we each one focusing on one area, we have this one post, which is really easy to go through. And it's a single place you, you go to and it covers the most important things that have uh, changed and have been announced. So this is a really great way and easier to follow up uh, that gives you a nice glance into what's new and changed. Absolutely, really cool on that. Uh, and the last one for Microsoft, a lot of announcements obviously because of the build. Uh, Tree-based collaborated apps like Workday in uh, apps like Workday in Microsoft Teams boost engagement and productivity. And and this is a big, big, big investment area for us um, on basically it's the ISVs, um, uh, ISV ecosystem, uh, because it's the easiest way to get additional features and capabilities to the Microsoft Teams if you are a, a customer. Um, and of course, as an ISVs, um, they can easily integrate their applications in Microsoft Teams inside of the Teams UI, or then they can connect to Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 from their side as well. So there's a lot of, lot of different opportunities uh, available. And this is blog post from Trini around the different options and extensibility points. Now let's move in, uh, forward in here. Uh, Todd Basinski had a new blog post as well. I, well, actually, it is videos. Uh, Video, series, but yeah, series, that's fair. Series. That's fair. And these go about what is catalog in Power Platform. So if you are interested in that, I have no idea what it is. But from the <laughs> topics that I skim, I reckon it's related to uh, PCF components. Uh, that would be something re related to that. So if you are interested in this space, check it out because you yep. might learn a new thing or two. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Marcus Miller had a new blog post around assigning Microsoft Graph permissions to manage identities, the potential in this way. Wait, wait, Microsoft Graph permissions manage identities. What does it mean? So in AD or M365, you've got the idea to create a managed identity. And the idea is, there is that it's not a user, but it is identity to, to, to which you can grant access to APIs. And that's really cool if you have a non-interactive app like an yep. API or pro process that, that runs on timer, and you want it to be able to do something with the data in N365. Well, that thing, need, that thing is not a user, but it is a thing to which you can assign access, right? So Correct. it's a really Correct. cool concept that frees you all from you know managing secrets, managing permissions and passwords and all that. It's it's a way leaner. It's probably the way, if you ask me, re recommended way to go about having this unattended access from within apps. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Really, really cool. Thank you, Marcus, on that one. Now, uh, Sudharshan K uh, had an SPFX custom global navigation for SharePoint Online, uh, a storyline related on how to build those things and with the code. And I think we'll have a screenshot here as well. There's the global navigation visible on top of the SharePoint things because the placeholder is above that navigation section. Uh, so you can do actually really, really cool um, global navigations which are visible across the, all of the sites from a one single, single uh, centralized deployment point. 
which is cool. Message Center Show had a latest version, uh, latest version, latest edition, uh, multiple home sites for your connection, uh, Teams, Collaborative, Stage View, and all of that. That is a big thing, and so the multiple home sites for your connection. It's been one of the blocking factors for driving adaption of Viva connection, and hopefully that will unblock now uh, people to move forward. So really, really cool stuff, and a lot of, lot of other things here as well. Now, from a video perspective, we had the plugins for Microsoft 360 Copilot. We've mentioned that already. Uh, could actually call it out uh, separately as well. Uh, we had also in the Microsoft 365 video channel uh, introduced Microsoft Syntax plugins for Microsoft 365 Copilot. Related, but more on the content uh, as you yeah. are talking with Copilot, you can actually access the inf files and content within the tenant. Very, really cool. And then April uh, had a video. Good to have April back as well. Uh, there's been a, uh, she's been really busy uh, on on the, all of the conferences and all of that. Um, I had a chance to uh, catch up with her in the Las Vegas as well. It's really really cool. But how to use the Power Apps host object to enhance your mobile experience? That's actually really really cool as well. Mobile first line workers, big 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 focus area for Microsoft right now. So. Uh, top 10 power platform takeaways from Build. That's actually really cool as well. Uh, so um, Shane, together with James, uh, uh, to talk about the 10 most important takeaways from their perspective uh, from Build. So good summary as well. And then uh, Paolo is back uh, as well. He was away for a while. Uh, and you get all sites endpoint in Microsoft Ground. So basically, if you have a geo distributed tenant, and uh, this is the API to get all of the sites across the, the across the geo distributed tenant. What does it mean that geo distributed? It means that you have technically multiple tenants, one in US, one in Europe, one in Asia, as an example. So they're in a different data centers and because of compliance reasons. But it's really cool that you can actually have a one API endpoint to access all of the sites across the whole thing. Yes. And then as the final video, uh, Juliana DeLuca on how to create Microsoft and SharePoint lists with integrated approval workflows. But I guess stuff. that's it for this one. So we're a bit of a running out of time uh, because of the <laughs> allocations and schedules. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank, thank you, uh, Leslie, for joining us on the chat. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Please use hashtag PMP Weekly uh, in the Twitter. If you are in Twitter, that will help us on catching the cool stuff what you're writing on. But other than that, have a great weekend. Welcome so back for dinner week. All the, all the fish.